Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is C++ from Scratch. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about another one of our standard library containers, and that's going to be our std vector or standard vector. So there are often times when we're programming where we don't know how many elements we want to put into a container ahead of time, right? So the, the you know this data may be coming from some external source that we don't exactly know the total size of, right, from the very start. Now this presents a bit of a challenge for the, the container that we've looked at so far, which is our std array. One of the template parameters for our std array is the number of elements we want that array to store, right? And that had to be known at compile time. So a bit of a problem here. Uh, so we need a container that can dynamically grow, um, you know, kind of as we need it to. And that's kind of where std vector comes in. So std vector is very much like our std array in many respects, except um, it can dynamically grow, right? So it's a dynamically sized array. So let's go ahead and, you know, talk about std, uh, std vector for a bit and see kind of the basics of how we can use this container. So let's go ahead and get started and we'll create a new example here uh, called something like vector.cpp. And of course, we'll start out with including a few things, right? So we'll include IO stream because um, we'll probably want to print the contents of our vector. And you can see here from our CPP reference for std vector that std vector is defined in the header vector. So we'll need to include that as well. So we'll go ahead and include uh, vector in here. Now we can go ahead and create our main function core of our C++ programs. And we can go ahead and get started with just creating our vector. So we'll just create a std vector. So you can see here, there's a, a few different kinds. Um, we're going to ignore this version with these uh, polymorphic memory resources uh, and this polymorphic allocator for now. We're mainly going to be talking about this first one here that takes um, as one of the template parameters, um, some class T, right? Um, you know, whatever type we want to store inside of this dynamically sized array, this vector. Um, and we'll just use the default allocator. So we don't need to specify anything for that. So as our template parameter here for a vector, right, when we're creating, uh, say, a variable that is going to have the type vector, um, all we need to say is what type you want to store in there. So in this case, we'll just create a vector of integers. So std vector of int right here. And we'll just call this, say, you know, my vector. Uh, and that's all we need to do to create this variable here. So as a reminder, unlike our array, we don't need to specify the number of elements we want to store in our vector. Um, at runtime, right, underneath the hood, our runtime will take care of finding the amount of memory we need for the number of elements we want to put inside of our vector. It's not something that we need to worry about at compile time, or rather, not something that we need to know specifically at compile time. Okay, now, just like our array, um, we can also initialize our vector, right? Where we define it. So we can use that same kind of initializer list syntax. So we can say, you know, inside of this vector, we'll just put some sequential numbers. So say one, two, three, four, and five, right? So we'll go ahead and just store these values inside of my vector. So I've got five values in my vector so far. So let's go ahead and say print out this just like we would our std vector, um, or rather our std array. So here we'll just create a simple print function. So we'll do a, a void function called print, um, or rather with a void return type as an input, we'll have a std vector of integers that we'll just call vector. And then uh, inside of here, we'll have a range based for loop. So we'll say for, you know, auto value inside of my vector, I want to go ahead and print out that value, followed by a space. And then at the very end, we'll just print out a new line character, right? So a simple print function here. And we can go ahead and use that with our vector. So we'll print out uh, my vector down here. Okay, so very much like we used as to the array, the only difference here is we don't need to specify the number of elements inside this vector. So let's go ahead and compile this, uh, this vector.cpp, and we'll just call the output executable something like vector. So there we've got our output executable. Let's go ahead and run it. Unsurprisingly, we get a printout of the contents of that vector, one, two, three, four, um, and five. Okay, so now let's move on to something a little more specific to vectors, so something that you know, starts to differentiate us from our std array. So let's go ahead and move down inside of this uh, 
uh, reference page here. And we'll start looking at some of these member functions here, right? So a lot of these are the same um, as we saw inside of our array. So we have say an at method, um, we have this operator with the square brackets, so we can, you know, index into our vector just like we did our array. We have methods for front and back to get the first and last element and even access to the underlying array. Using this data method, we have our iterators that we looked at, um, you know, in the last video where we talked about iterators. So things like, or, or rather a couple videos ago, where we talked about things like begin, end, and r begin and r end. But where things start to differ really is with our capacity methods and our modifier methods, right? So unlike our array, because we can change the size uh, of our vector, we have some new methods. So things like pushback and emplace back and also this say insert and emplace, right? So we can start adding elements into our array, right? And just rely on it runtime. Um, having kind of the under under the hood stuff of our vector take care of finding that memory for us, right? Instead of relying on our compiler to take care of that. Okay, so let's go ahead and play around with some of these. Uh, specifically, we'll start by looking at pushback. So if we go ahead and take a look at pushback, it says it adds an element uh, to the end, right? So to the end of our vector. So that seems like a neat thing to try. So let's go ahead and use it. So we'll go ahead and go back over here. And we'll go ahead and call my vector dot pushback. And we'll just add, say, the element uh, or the number six to the end of our vector. And I'll go ahead and you know, add another print after we do this pushback. And we'll go ahead and recompile and run this. So we'll expect to see um, our original vector printed out and then our vector with the number six added to it printed out next. So we'll go ahead and save this. Um, go ahead and exit out of here. We'll recompile um, our program and we'll run it. And you can see we were able to successfully add an element to our vector at runtime, right? So we added the number six to our vector. Now, another uh, you know, method you see here in this modifiers is we also have this pop back method. So we can also remove elements from our, our vector, right? So specifically pop back removes the last element of our vector. So let's go ahead and use that as well, right? So here, I'll go ahead and uh, go down here. We'll create a new line and we'll do my vector dot pop back, right? Well, so we put a call there and then I'll add another print afterwards. So we should see our original vector, then our vector with six added to it. Then we get rid of six with pop back and then we should, should see basically our original vector again. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this recompile again and let's run our executable my vector and we get kind of exactly what we expect we see one two three four five followed by um you know the same thing with six added to the end um, and then we go back to one two three four five after we run that pop back method okay so that's a little bit on these kind of modifiers right so here we're changing kind of the size um, of our vector, adding elements to it with things like pushback, and then removing elements with things like uh, popback. Now, one of the important questions that many people have here is kind of what's going on underneath the hood here? Um, you know, what's kind of going on with memory? And one of the things uh, that we're often, you know, we want to be conscious about is kind of the size and the capacity of our vector. Right. So, you know, here when we're talking about size, right, so we have a size method here. Our size is the number of elements that we have inside our vector, right? So, for example, we have five elements here, six elements here, and then back to five elements after we do that pop back. But then we have this other uh, method right here, this capacity, and that returns the number of elements that the container has allocated space for, right? So there may be a difference between our size and our capacity, right? Our size just says, how many elements have we added into our vector? Our capacity says, how many elements do we have space for underneath the hood, right? And if we don't have space for that number of elements, right? If we say we're adding a new element, um, underneath the hood, our vector will have to do a reallocation or a dynamic allocation to find more space to fit all those elements. So let's kind of start by playing around with that and looking at size and capacity of our vector as we keep adding elements. So we'll go ahead and go back into here. You know, we'll do some deleting of you know these different prints out printouts that we have, and we'll just go ahead and start with say an empty vector here. So we'll go ahead and save this. 
And then we'll go ahead and you know just create a simple loop here. So we'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than 10, i plus plus, right? Or i plus equals one. So here we're just gonna have a loop that runs for 10 iterations. And inside of this loop, we're gonna keep adding elements to our vector. So we'll do my vector dot pushback. And here we'll just add, you know, i to our vector, right? So we should have 10 pushbacks to our vector for the 10 iterations of this loop. And one thing we might want to keep track of is, you know, what is the size and the capacity of our vector at the start of each iteration? So let's go ahead and add a couple prints for that. So we'll go ahead and do std c out, and we'll do my, uh, we'll print out size first. So we'll print out my vector dot size, followed by a new line character. And then we'll go ahead and do kind of the same thing, but we'll swap out size for capacity, right? And then we'll go ahead and change this method here to capacity, right? So remember size is the number of elements inside of our vector and capacity is the amount of space we have uh, underneath the hood inside of our vector to store those elements. All right, so let's go ahead and save this and let's go ahead and recompile vector now. So let's go ahead and see how size and capacity changes as we keep adding elements with pushback to our vector. And we, we see something that's pretty interesting here. So everything seems uh, pretty normal from the start, right? In our first iteration of the loop, uh, the size of our vector is zero and the capacity is zero. All we have is our variable that we created, my vector. We haven't done anything to it. We haven't added it to anything to it. So there's no elements in it and there's no underlying storage. Then after we add a single element, well, we've added a single element to our vector, so our size is one and our capacity is also one, right? So our vector found space for that single element we needed to store. Then as we go through the loop again, you see our size grows to two, right? So our size is just gonna increase by one every single iteration of that loop because we're just adding a new element to that vector every iteration of that loop. So we get to size two here and our capacity also grows to two, right? We added another element to our vector. Yeah, we only had capacity one here. So our vector had to go, you know, okay, I need to find some new space. So it reserved enough space for two elements. Now where things start to get interesting is with the next iteration of our loop. So we add another element to our vector. So we go from uh, size two to size three, but our capacity goes all the way up to four here, right? So once we add the third element to our vector, our capacity doubles, right? It increases from two to four, right? So now when we do another pushback, right? And add to, you know, we get to size four here, our capacity is still at four, right? We basically reserved two spaces inside of our vector back here. So we had enough space for two pushbacks. And then we see as we continue on, right? After we run out of space here, our size is four and our capacity is four. So we've completely filled our allocated space. If we try to push back a fifth element, our capacity grows again and it again doubles, right? And so for our particular implementation, right? So for uh, GCC that I'm using here, there's a bit of an exponential dynamic allocation going on. So when we run out of space, um, our vector grows by a power of two. So you can see here, we started at capacity zero, then one, then two, then four, then eight, and then all the way down to 16 here. And this will increase, keep increasing to 32, 64, 128, and so on and so forth as we keep pushing back elements and running out of space um, inside of our vector. And by running out of space, I mean we hit the max capacity here. So our size is equal to capacity and we say do another pushback. Our vector has to find you know, a larger space to store all of those elements. So it has to do another allocation here. So that, that's a little bit about how things are working underneath the hood here. Our vector is having to increase the capacity as we keep increasing the size of our vector. So when size uh, becomes greater than capacity, we have to uh, reallocate, right? And find some new memory. Now, this is something that's primarily important uh, to think about for performance reasons, right? Um, kind of intuitively, if we have to keep doing this reallocation, um, that's probably not gonna be great for performance. That's, that's a lot of work. So one of the things we can do to get around this and to help out with this is to use another one of our methods down here. 
and that's going to be our reserve method. So we can use our reserve method to reserve storage, right? So we can go ahead and increase the capacity of our vector ahead of time. And this is especially useful if we know, say, how many elements we're going to store in our vector, or maybe some maximum number of elements that could be in our vector. So here we'll go ahead and do just that. So we'll do my vector dot reserve 10, right? We know we have 10 iterations of this loop. We're going to um, you know, push back an element every iteration of this loop. So we'll go ahead and just reserve 10 spaces ahead of time, right? Enough space for 10 integers here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save this and we'll recompile and we'll go ahead and run this. And we see you know, quite a different result here. So starting out, right, in that first iteration of our loop, our size is zero, so we don't have any elements in our vector. But underneath the hood, we have space for 10 elements. Our capacity is 10. And you can see as we keep adding elements, our size keeps increasing, but we don't actually need to do any more allocations here. Our capacity is already 10 here. So as our, um, you know, the number of elements in our vector keeps growing and growing and growing, um, we're still okay, right? Our capacity is greater than or equal to um, our size here, right? So we don't need to do any more of those allocations, right? That could be expensive. Okay, so that's a bit of the basics, right, on std vector. This is kind of our first container that we've looked at that is doing something a bit more tricky underneath the hood. It's having to dynamically grow as we keep adding elements. And in fact, our vector can shrink as well. So we have a shrink uh, to fit method over here. So we can reduce the amount of memory used uh, by our vector, right? So if we have, you know, uh, if our size is less than our capacity, we can call shrink to fit to shrink our capacity to be equal to our size. Um, so that's another thing we can do. Now, like I said, there's, there's, there's plenty more information here relating to std vector. So we'll go ahead and link this down below. And we're gonna be talking a lot more about some of these other methods uh, in here, especially things like in place back um, and the difference between push back and in place back in later videos, especially when we start talking about, um, you know, things like classes and things like constructors. But that's gonna go ahead and do it for this time, basics of std vector. As always, you can find uh, this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.